Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian if you're new here and today we're going to be doing something that I, I really like testing out. I think it's fun and we're going to be checking out this XYZ 12 volt inverter. Now it's been a while since I've done one of these little tests on these inverters but now that I'm kind of getting into the RV type world these are starting to become a little bit more useful if I want to start doing some more boondocking or dry camping I need to get an inverter put into my camper. This XYZ brand is all over Amazon it's just another one of those China brand inverters um, but they get pretty good reviews so I wanted to check it out myself and to make sure that A it puts out pure sign energy and B you know it doesn't overheat it doesn't have an extremely loud fan all that good stuff so we're going to be testing that out on this video. Now this particular model is the 2500 watt version and you can mount it just in case you folks don't know you can mount an inverter flat on the surface this inverter can be mounted on a wall say in a closet or your solar room or whatever so you can mount it vertically like this and that's perfectly fine and this inverter actually has hardwire terminal on the end right here so with this hardwire terminal block you can use Romex say and hardwire it into the end of this terminal block so you don't have to actually plug anything in it's just hardwired so when you turn the inverter on your outlets are powered now keep in mind this terminal block has a little plastic cover on it keep that on because when you turn this inverter on these terminals are live and it will shock you just an fyi don't ask me how i found that out so if you do hardwire it this is going to give you 20 amps if you just use an extension cord and plug it into these 120 outlets that's 15 amps and this inverter came with these battery cables now i don't really ever use the cables that come with inverters because they're typically on the cheaper end and you have to double them up if you're going to use up to the 2500 watts worth of capacity on this thing but it does come with it in a pinch and it's good to kind of you know keep in a spare drawer if you ever you know need extra cabling but but for this application I'm going to be using two gauge copper wire to test an inverter you're gonna need a battery and so the other fun part of this test is I'm gonna be hooking up this VPOW I don't even know how to pronounce it it's kind of of a no-name lithium iron phosphate battery brand that, that was on Amazon this is just your standard basic lithium iron phosphate very very budget friendly option if you want to go into the lipo 4 world for say a camper or a solar generator storage device now this does have a handle on top it's got a 100 amp BMS and it does not have cold temperature charge protection again it's your standard basic battery the only kind of weird thing on this battery is on the side you can see these kind of these ports that are not normal so you can hit this button and turn on a usb port and it's also got what they're calling an aviation port nowhere in the literature can i find what that's used for i have no idea i'm assuming some type of battery monitor but nothing on the website shows anything about it i don't know what it's there for but the usb ports do work so you can actually plug in some type of you know phone charger battery charger or whatever into those ports and use this battery directly as a charger so that's kind of a unique feature that that i don't have on hardly any of my other batteries so we'll be testing out this vpow battery with this xyz inverter and see if they work well together and kind of get a feeling on the quality of both units so the first thing we got to do is actually get the inverter connected to the battery and i'm going to be using this i already had this made but i've got my victron shunt and a 100 amp fuse so that means guys with this setup that i have right here i'm not going to be able to get anywhere near that 2500 watts but i'll try to push it to around 90 95 amps because i don't want to blow my fuse the battery only has a 100 amp bms in it so anything over 100 amps the battery is going to shut the inverter down before the inverter shuts the inverter down so we're going to get to around 95 amps and call it good for this test but that'll give us a good indication of the type of energy that this thing puts out as well as other few odds and ends on this little inverter so i've got most of the cabling installed i've got the positive to the positive the negative and i've got one last negative lug to attach to the inverter now a little tip is these inverters have capacitors that as soon as you connect all of the connections together you're going to get a spark highly likely and to prevent that spark you can just pick up a little resistor and if you just touch the lug to the inverter on the negative side it's going to charge up those capacitors in this inverter so when you go to connect it it's already got the juice in it for the best way to put it so you're not going to get a huge spark so that's what i'm going to do here i'm just going to kind of charge up these capacitors and then i'm going to connect this lug so 
and that's perfectly fine. We're just charging it up. There we go. So no spark, which is good. Okay. Not the prettiest of setups, but it's going to work for my testing. So right now this battery is sitting at 14.1 volts and the output voltage is at 122 with no load. Okay, folks, so I've got this set up. We will be using, of course, a heat gun to test out the inverter and the battery. Got the inverter cut on. We are at 122 volts. And I've got my Victron Smart Shunt here, and I've got the app pulled up, but I'll put a screenshot here on the side so you can watch the current go along with me. And again, we're gonna be raising this thing up to about 90, 95 amps, because I don't wanna blow any fuses. And again, this battery only has a 100 amp BMS, so anything over that, and it's gonna shut off before the inverter does. So, let's get started. Kind of steady at 25 amps there, nothing big. Let's kick it up to full. There's 90, almost 94 amps right there. The fans haven't even kicked on on this inverter. So I'm gonna let this run for about five minutes. And we'll come back and check the temperature of the inverter, the cables, and make sure everything is working fine. Okay guys, so we're actually almost to the seven minute mark. So we're still sitting at 97 amps, pulling around 1200 watts, which really is not scratching the surface for this inverter. And actually after seven minutes, these fans just cut on. I don't know if you heard that, but inverter is cool to the touch. And again, 119 volts on the multimeter. Let me show you what the inverter is showing. So we're still showing this is outputting 119 volts. My battery is sitting at 12.2 volts. And the fans actually just cut off. So they were only on for about 30, 45 seconds. Now, the most important, let's check out the sine wave on this thing. And I'd say that gets a pass for a perfect, clean sine wave. I'll go ahead and do some surface temperature checks, but I can tell you it's, it's cold to the touch. So 78. Let's check some of these cables right on the lug. 76 on the lug. 77 on the positive battery terminal. So nothing's hot, nothing's warm, really. And everything's working well. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this heat gun because it's getting warm in here. So I think honestly, folks, this is a pretty budget friendly little setup. The battery is around $300, $315. I'll have to put a price for the inverter, but these XYZ inverters, again, you can get them in any shape or form you want from XYZ. They've got a thousand watt, 500 watt, 3000 watt, 12 volt, 24 volt. And the fans just cut on again, I guess, to kind of cool down that, that board inside. But for a complete small off-grid setup, you can get a 100 amp hour battery like this and an inverter like this and some thicker gauge cable for probably around five or $600. And throw it in your camper if you ever need to have AC power. But for this simple test, um, everything worked well together. Um, 120 volts on average putting out, which is good. Pure sine energy coming out, which is good. And the ability on this inverter to hardwire a 20 amp circuit onto this thing is pretty beneficial because sometimes 15 amps just doesn't cut it, especially if you're running a higher wattage AC unit. Sometimes 15 amps, you know, around 1875 watts, a bigger AC unit is going to go above and beyond that and it might shut off either your battery or your inverter. So to be able to have 20 amps, is good if you need that extra little oomph to get over the hump. Yeah, everything works. So this might be the next addition to my new little camper in the event that, you know, I ever go boondocking, which I don't anticipate, but it's always good to have this as a backup because you never know. So gang, that's my little review on this VPO battery and the XYZ inverter. And again, everything works fine as of right now. 
and hopefully I'll get to put this thing to the test more out in the wild on my RV. So until then, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and we will see you next time. Take care.